Thank you everyone for subscribing to Infinitely Productions. If it is you have not done so, please click the bell and subscribe and we hope you enjoy our content. During the trial, prosecutors argued that Anthony Tura and his son Lewis plotted to kill mob underboss Joey Merlino. They played a secret FBI tape with Anthony Tura allegedly talking about ways to do the job. If they leave you home, not going to go up, tell them you're the sheriff. That's all. You got a new sheriff in there. Remember me? Boom. When he was in the house, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, the cops didn't want to leave him. They're not going to watch the house. They're going to leave him. That's when he just dumped them. Your name's right in there with a couple of explosives. I'm going up. Can't hear anything that's coming. Jake Griffin was Anthony Tura's attorney. Oh, I would imagine you could you could glean from uh, the testimony in this case that vengeance. Uh, I would imagine could be a motive, but I I have no idea. The remaining defense attorneys involved say they're completely because baffled the by the all of this. Yeah, the poor man was suffering almost terminally from some sort of illness. He looked like death walking. Why anybody would bother to kill him is something we just don't understand. About but one attorney did point out similarities between Tura's murder and the murder of drug dealer Frank Russo in June of 1995. Russo was shot in the head, just like Anthony Tura. That particular shooting is identical to the shooting of Frank Russo, who is uh, one of the people in this trial who has been spoken about. Russo's father was in court on Monday, reportedly staring down one of the defendants, saying, quote, he killed my son. What's on the ground? Are you guys going to talk, try to talk to Merlino? You guys want to talk to Joey? Vernon Odo. How's it going today? Oh, How are you doing? Oh, pretty good. What's going on? Nothing much. Tell us anything, uh, you tell us anything, Tim? Anything you can tell us about the investigation? No comment. Morning.
No time. Joey, can you tell us, what about Mr. Toro's killing? Four of Joy Merlino's reputed top La Cosa Nostra associates were arrested today and now face theft and racketeering charges along with Merlino. They include Ralph Abruzzi, Anthony Accardo, and Frank Gambino. The FBI says they were key players in a three-year-long series of thefts from South Philadelphia's CSX Freight Yard and Ameriport, both on Delaware Avenue. Certain individuals um, took cargo trailers or containers of merchandise from various storage facilities on Delaware Avenue and provided those items to LCM members, which was subsequently distributed in the Philadelphia area. Prosecutors say over $400,000 worth of TVs, VCRs, toy trains, ceiling fans, women's sweatsuits, bicycles, and baby formula were stolen with the aid of nine others also busted today. Three of them owners of their own trucking companies in South Philadelphia, including Wesley and John Domenici of 3rd Street. Also arrested today, a former CSX security guard named Raymond Russo, a.k.a. Ray Duck. The indictment uh, alleges that he simply permitted uh, them to pull their uh, trucks in uh, to unload um, the things in those yards from the trailers onto their trucks and pull out with it. The indictment says that the total value of the stolen goods was nearly one and a half million dollars. They're also accused of plotting to receive and possess stolen seafood, vodka, cigarettes, dresses, U.S. coins, computers, and electric race car sets. Police would not speculate on how much, if any, of the loot might have been part of Merlino's annual Christmas giveaway to the poor. Joy Merlino was not brought to today's hearing. He remains in prison on a drug charge denied bail. The 13 others busted today are being released on bail tonight. Pleading guilty to the violation of 2C colon 29-2A. And that would be with a recommendation from the state of a $250 fine. Again, I'm going to ask you to make, uh, make that assumption. These... Uh... Container charge, and to that the state would recommend a $250 fine again with the discussion and the consent uh, of the office. We are determined to continue to make it very costly uh, to operate uh, this criminal enterprise at La Costa Nostra, and this is not uh, the end of our efforts.
Well, when I refer to the other defense counsel as ornaments, I, I, I don't mean to be unkind, but uh, Joe Santaguida, Joey Merlino, and I don't need any help trying this drug case. It involves Mr. Merlino and nobody else. Uh, it's senseless to have four other defendants or four other uh, defense attorneys sitting there watching us try this case for four to six weeks. That's what I meant. Do you agree that this is, um, or I guess you and some of the others have argued uh, that it's prejudicial because the other, uh, the indictment against uh, Merlino also includes uh, the, the, the drug conspiracy and well, it's prejudicial in a lot of ways. It's prejudicial to them because they have nothing to do, in the view of the government, with this cocaine. It's prejudicial to us because it's keeping us from going to trial. All I asked for today was a trial. We're not asking a lot. We want to go to trial. We want to face the Philadelphia version of Sam Gravano, and we want to do it today. We don't want to do it six months from now. That's all we're asking for. We want our day in court. Well, it's the uh, same thing we said in court. I think it's a ridiculous charge. And if they have any uh, actual evidence of bad faith to uh, to present it instead of saying these scurrilous charges. Well, what about the idea that cocaine charges are prejudicial compared to theft charges? That seems almost amusing to say, well, we only want to be accused as common thieves as opposed to prejudice. It, it, it was our argument that the case should go together because it was all, all our allegations, the allegations are in the indictment, that all the crimes were done under the umbrella of the Philadelphia Lacosa Nostra, who exists, which exists in, for one purpose, which is to make money by illegal means. And two of the illegal means as charged in the indictment were the dealing in cocaine and the theft. So that was our argument there. Testified that Merlino made him, that Merlino allowed him to operate up there, and that they discussed the. Uh, and the, and the, the yeah. I watched the other people of the I really do. I so it don't be any comments in front of me, sir. at all. None whatsoever. What's this like for you? It's hard. It's hard on me, the family, the kids, his wife, his sisters. It's hard. Rita, what is Joe telling you about the conditions? I can't talk to Joe. He has no rights for a phone call, no visits, no nothing. 
first time I seen Joseph is today after I came to him in months. How did he look today? Worn out. Do you think he's going to be able to get a fair trial? No. Not at all. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and check out more of our content. Feel free to give your feedback and suggestions on what we should do next in the comments. This is Infinite Lee Productions. We love ya.